Today, we're gonna take a quick look at Splatterhouse 2. Let me declare my bias here, I fucking love this game. But it's got some issues. The first of which is pretty apparent as soon as you look at the box. I mean, what the fuck is this shit? It looks like Jason Voorhees is fighting the alien from the movie, suffering from severe sunburn while Saturday morning cartoon version of Cthulhu is trying to tentacle rape him from behind. What what? In the butt. I said what what? In the butt. Also, what's up with this ugly ass ghost? And did he just shit blood? I mean, I know there are representations of enemies in the game, but this game is supposed to be scary. It's dark, it's gritty, it's violent. This doesn't look scary though, it looks fucking goofy. This is what the cover should have looked like. Or this. Or maybe something like this. But not like that. And I don't think it was a conscious effort to tone down the violence so shop owners wouldn't flip their shit either. At least they had no problem advertising the fact that this game lets you take a chainsaw to a baby on the back of the box. Yeah, you heard me right, but more on that later. In the box we have the game and the manual. I never understood why Sega would print the manuals in such a shitty way. Why are all the languages next to each other? Why wouldn't they have a separate section for each language? You know, like in every other manual on the entire planet. As far as manuals go however, this does everything right. It elaborates on the story, it gives you useful information like that Rick gains a life at 20,000 points and how to do the slide kick that never ever works when you need it. It has got a small section on the weapons and enemies and it's not even that badly written. It actually helps to read it before playing the game. So, let's fire this thing up. The story can be summed up like this. You are Rick. This is your girlfriend Jennifer. She suffers from a bad case of cartridge mouth. In your dream, she cries for help and falls into something that can only be described as devil goat seed. You have to save her. Good thing you held on to that ancient Marian bone mask that turns you into a violent psychopath, you know, from the last time you had to save her ass. Now go to the house and kill some shit. The first thing that catches your eye... What the fuck? Something sounds different. Okay, now, where were we? Oh yes. The first thing that catches your eye is that Rick looks like a dick. Who wears a sleeveless green jumpsuit? Seriously. Well, the backgrounds look cool, and so do the enemies, and holy shit, you can punch their torso right off their legs. Awesome. Just take a look at the first weapon you find. You can use this pipe to smack enemies onto the wall. This is one of the most satisfying weapons I've ever used in a video game. Actually, this is where the game takes a lot of its charm from. The graphics are fucking beautiful. Each weapon has its own kill animation that differs from the fist punch kill animation. Look at this! The backgrounds are also a sight to behold. There are corpses being eaten by giant purple sperms with teeth, there are corpses floating in the river, and there are even dismembered corpses attached to the wall with rivers of blood coming out of them. Then there are the boss monsters, which are exactly as the name would imply, fucking boss. Look at this fat fuck in his room full of gore, I'll punch him with my mighty fist. Hmm, this reminds me of something. People are always talking about the 16-bit games and which of the two consoles is better. To me, it has always been the Mega Drive. Because of games like this, just look at this. Show me the Nintendo game that lets you use a chainsaw to fight an aborted fetus that has been hung from the neck and vomits acid. Yeah, I didn't think so. This is one of the coolest bosses in video game history. I imagine it's not too popular with the Christian gaming demographic though. Now. Playing this game, two of its flaws become painfully apparent. The first is that Rick not only looks like a dick, he also jumps like a dick. Shit! Fuck! No! Get your fat ass over there, you idiot! No! Yeah, Super Mario, this is not. The other problem is that, what the fuck, why did you just drop the shotgun? Well, 
Rick apparently suffers from a rare form of OCD that prevents him from bringing objects into another room. I know they did this so they would have to draw the custom kill animations only for certain enemies, but it still pisses me the fuck off. Some people say this game is very hard, and it's true, it's not an easy game, but it's not unfair either. This is a pattern recognition game, and as soon as you figure the patterns out, you can even play this without losing one heart, like this guy. Personally, it took me and a friend between 4 and 5 hours to beat this game. It's forgiving in the way that it gives you passwords that let you start again from the beginning of your current stage. It also introduces the stage hazards to you. This guy, for example, falls into the sperm pit, and this guy gets eaten by piranhas. Not only does this spare you some cheap deaths, it is also handy because not all of the pits are deadly. This one, for example, just puts you onto an alternate path. The music is good too. It mostly fits the tone of the game, and aside from the speech, the sound effects are okay too. Except... What the fuck is this supposed to be? What kind of monster makes such a petty noise? You'll hear this constantly. This scream works with no monster. Ever. Look, I can prove it. Once you've beaten the first level, you pretty much know the gameplay of the entire game, but it still gives you enough variety in enemies, weapons and stage design to keep things interesting. Having disposed of the fatso, you can go into an elevator that leads you into a dark tunnel with lots of spikes that you have to sissy jump over. At the end of the tunnel, you'll enter a floaty face room and pop this dude's eyeballs. From there you walk through a door that leads you to a river where piranhas bite you in the dick. The river leads you to a wooden cabin, where you meet the babies and saw them in half. A nuclear testicle appears, which you pop with your trusty chainsaw, leading to one of the most epic level endings ever. Seriously, every level in every game should end like this. From there, Rick has to cross a wooden bridge, which is being eaten by the octopus thing from the cover. This one doesn't look like a Saturday morning cartoon though. The bridge leads you to a path with ghosts that screw with your directional movement. Also, a lot of holes, which all mysteriously lead to the same fucking point in the same fucking tunnel. Both the path and the tunnel lead Rick to a boss monster, the face of which suspiciously looks like a butt. Buttface turns into a four-legged spider eye, which eventually melts and lets Rick enter the house. Inside, mounted animal heads vomit acid. <laughs> and Thing from the Adams Family movies fingers Rick's asshole. Crossing the pickled monster farm, Rick enters the sewer, because there always is a sewer level. Up the stairs waits Waldorf's insane brother, who tries to firebomb Rick. Technically, you could set him on fire with one of his own health potion looking firebombs, but personally, I find it more satisfying to knock his face off. The next stage is a ritualistic looking place, where this happens. Excuse me? Ah, uh, still didn't catch that. Okay. Basically, you punch a bunch of hands and heads out of the air, hell coughs up a nasty loogie and into the void you go. At the end of the most uninspired stage of the game, you meet the most uninspired boss of the game. Also, Rick reveals his true colors. Thank you for saving me, Rick. I'm sick of always having to save you, bitch. I told you not to leave the kitchen.
After defeating the second uninspired form of the uninspired boss, Rick and Jennifer leave through a portal that brings them to, once again, an elevator. In the true spirit of every escort mission ever, Jennifer does fuck all to help Rick. Well, at least she can't be hurt. Jenny's apathy carries over to the next stage, where you meet the Kraken again. She's probably still pissed, because she doesn't even hand Rick the spikes he punches out of the air with his bare hands like only a real man could. Finally, they make it to the shore, where Rick has to make his last stand against the end boss, the Lugi from Hell, which will turn into the Red Falcon's retarded little brother. As a whole, I think Splatterhouse 2 is a great game. What it does, it does well. However, there are other games that do the same and are much cheaper. You should only pay the inflated prices for a physical copy if you find this game as aesthetically pleasing as I do. Because as far as 16-bit violence goes, you can't do much better than this game. Oh yeah, for all who care, here's the ending of the game. Both the western and the somewhat dyslexic Japanese version. Dein Grund, spiel die Hand auf! Du wirst mit den Kindern nirgendwo hinfahren! Du wirst mit der Axt durch ein Labyrinth jagen!